reason number like 117 that you shouldn't bring a tuna bunzo on a plane. <laughs> oh, wait, this is my oh, my stuff's over here. Okay, okay, okay. Ready? Let's Wait, what's going on, guys? That's Amanda Hamilton. That's Molly Kirkman. And this, this is, is zero to one twenty-five cooking, cooking edition. edition. Ready, ready. Okay, guys. Today we're gonna make a couple of different recipes. I've got some stuff to make some of my favorite. You may have seen them before. Um, sushi sandwich. <laughs> a nasty floor sandwich. <laughs> Nasty. It was delicious, and you can tailor it to your needs. Um, it's got a really good balance of carbs and protein. Um, I make it for breakfast and I make it for lunch. I'm gonna make both versions for you today. Nice. Um, one of them's got tuna, so I don't take it on a plane, but it's really good for travel. Other than that, <laughs> okay. So that's great. I'm actually really looking forward to that because I think I have a pretty bad protein content in my breakfast. So super excited to try that one. Now for me. I am very bad at getting my macros in from like a lunch and dinner perspective. Throughout the week, I'm busy. Like as much as we would like to think, we're professional mountain bikers all day. We both have day jobs. And so I wanna show you guys my easiest, I kinda call it like a junk drawer chili, but it fits your macros, it has a bunch of veggies in it, and it's a super easy one pot meal. So I'll take you guys through that. What do we mean by fits your macros? Oh yeah, fits your macros. So it has the appropriate carbs, fats, and proteins in it. And for the type of training we're doing, I think we have to be pretty carb heavy and pretty protein heavy. Yep. I notoriously suck at hitting my protein goals. Um, unless I do a protein smoothie, which I do try to do every day, sure. it's really hard because I don't know about you, but I'm going for about one gram of protein per pound that I weigh, yep. which is about 130 grams for me a day and like what, 160 for That's you? That's a lot of protein. Like a how, lot. how much is 130 grams of protein? It is so much. Okay, so like if you think about like, how about eggs? Egg, okay, Which two eggs? eggs have like 14 grams of protein in them. Yeah, so or like a protein smoothie where I put two servings of protein powder, like double it up, yeah. has 40. Yeah, so we're running around out here like bodybuilders trying to get these macros yeah. in. Um, we're really hoping that these recipes can be a really great go-to for you guys. It's carried us through our first training block, so let's show you how to get this thing done. So. Uh, to make these things, which I call a bunzo, they're actually called an onigiri zoo if you were uh, in Japanese. Um, but basically, it's a sushi sandwich. So over here in the rice cooker, I've got some sushi rice going on, nice and warm, super simple. Um, you can also make it on the stove. I like a rice cooker though because you can set it and forget it. Uh, so that's all ready to go. Um, you need your nori. This is roasted seaweed that comes in sheets like this. I'm gonna use one per uh, sandwich. Um, then my fillings. So I'm gonna make a breakfast one and a lunch one. Here, we're gonna make a quick tuna salad. So I've got a can of tuna, which this is the best because it has 25 grams of protein for this can of tuna. Um, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of mayo and a little bit of sriracha. Over here, I'm gonna do an omelet one where I'm gonna add a little bit of soy sauce and two eggs, super simple. First, I'm gonna crack two eggs. Got a little shell in there, let's get that out. Boop. Yummy. And then I just eyeball this, a splash of soy sauce. Like, maybe a little more than a splash. Generous splash. And then I just take a little fork and break up the yolks. You can use any kind of oil to cook this omelet, but I prefer sesame oil, toasted sesame oil, because it adds a little nutty flavor. Molly's over here adding such healthy amounts of oil. I'm just like, yeah, add a half a <laughs> cup of oil to whatever I make. I'm like at home, like measuring it out with a quarter teaspoon, like, ooh, 12 calories. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, good enough. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let that get hot. How did you find this recipe? I invented this. This particular recipe I invented after a trip to Japan and being inspired by the food there. Interesting. So there is an egg dish you can get like, a, like at sushi restaurants called tamago yaki. Um, and I can actually make a proper one of those. This is a bastardized, Americanized version nice. of one of those. <laughs> God bless America. <laughs> um, with that proper tamago yaki, you don't use sesame oil, you use a little bit of soy sauce, you use dashi broth and some other, um, like I think you use a little bit of mirin, um, like rice wine uh, and all of that. And then there's a, sp you know, a, a specific pan and a specific technique. Sure. This I'm just gonna pop it in there, let it cook and fold it up. All right, here we go. Oh yeah. Swirl it around the pan. You want to let this set up. 
So don't touch it. Don't, like, I just let it sit there until the top seems a little more solid. Like, and you can just test it by wiggling the pan there. Yeah, so right now it's not ready because it's still pretty wiggly. Still pretty wiggly. It's getting there on that side. Okay. I'm notorious for touching things in the pan, so. <laughs> it's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta push it around. You want it, and you know, it's not, like, I would say, Half the time I make this, I make this beautiful folded omelet. Half the time I make it, it kind of falls apart, and either way it works. Scrambled eggs, omelet, come on guys, it's all the same <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> all right, here we go. I'm gonna fold it over. I'm actually gonna turn the heat off since the pan is hot, and just let it... Pressure's on, Malas. I know. The world is watching two. you make an omelet. Woo! So you have a, you have a culinary degree, right? Uh, totally. Yeah. Do, you know. And then <laughs> cut this in half. This is perfect. Guys, we don't have culinary degrees. We don't know what we're doing. Yep, perfect. So then I cut the omelet in half so I can layer two on top of each what? other. This is gorgeous. Um, and then I'm just gonna set this over. Guys, 10 out of 10. Woo! Don't drop it. Oh. On this plate, too cool. Ta-da. Wow, one beautiful organized omelet. Yep, mine's gonna be scrambled eggs if I try this, guys. <laughs> Okay, so these are just what they wrap sushi in. It's called nori, it's roasted seaweed, it's delicious by itself as a snack. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm going to do is take some rice. So I'm gonna take about 100 grams for each sandwich of rice, um, 50 per side of the sandwich. So, and I can eyeball that because I've measured it so many times, but I'm gonna say that's about like 50 grams of rice. And this is gonna be one side of the sandwich. So my hands are wet to make this easier. You can see it's already sticking though. Oh my God, it's so sticky. And I'm gonna put this into a square shape the best I can. So I am just making this into a square and you can see I'm making the square the opposite way of this um, square of the nori and that's gonna make it easier to fold up later. Square number two. Now that these are done, I'm gonna take my omelet and I'm gonna put it here, also a square shape. And I'm going to take my tuna with my hands here and also form this into a nice little square. Um, a full can of tuna doesn't, like it's a little too much for one sandwich. Like one can of tuna makes two like perfect size sandwiches. Awesome. Um, and now that that's done, I'm gonna go. And so could I make uh, the lunch version of the tuna and maybe store it in the fridge for a day? Totally. And it, will, will it be good tomorrow or will yeah. it be kind of soggy? It'll be great. I often make these like to go backcountry skiing or to go skiing or on a mountain bike trip as you've seen. Yeah. Um, and I'll wrap them in saran wrap. Um, and the seaweed gets all like soft, which is actually really good. Okay. Um, and they're great, like you could make a day before. The egg one, I recommend eating hot at like, I make that one here right away. But tuna or, you know, you could improvise and put any like chicken salad, egg salad, I don't know, anything you could think of that would fit in a, you could make it into a square shape, you could put in one of these. Okay. Yep, and so then you put another square on the top, which I just form in my hand. Look at that. And now we're gonna do the wrap. Wrap one, just like a present, wrap one side. Wrap the other, fold these guys in. Then I flip it upside down and let the heat of the sandwich and the rice just kind of like form that thing. There you have it guys. It looked a lot scarier when it was on the floor behind my van in Glorietta, but this is actually an attractive little package. You know, it looks a little bit worse for wear when it's inside your bike pack for yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Molly made this just to prove how easy it was. They made it in the back of my van, like with zero materials or cooking stuff. So uh, wait, you know. I brought the ingredients separate, didn't I? You brought the ingredients, <laughs> and like an absolute Neanderthal, like, we were just on the floor making this sandwich. I totally forgot about that. I thought that I had like made it ahead of time and like wrapped it pretty. No, I put it together out of like Tupperware in the back of the van. <laughs> So really bad first impression. So we, we we really hope we can make it a little bit better now. <laughs> Ta-da! Little square. Ready right away. All right, Amanda, rate the egg sandwich. The egg sandwich is amazing. Texture-wise, I was actually honestly worried it was gonna be a little gushy, but you have a little bit of bite in the rice and the soy sauce in the eggs mm. is insane. What about, I mean, what are your thoughts on it? Um, it turned out super well. Uh, for the rice as well, I put a little bit of sake and a little bit of rice vinegar in there um, during the cooking process, so the rice is extra flavorful. Okay. I was actually scared of this one because I was saying I don't really like <laughs> mayo, but paired with the sriracha, it's really good. 
And the mayo actually is a really good binder to hold the tuna it together. Does. It's yeah, not a it, huge mess. Otherwise, I mean, it's look too at dry. That. Yeah, yeah. It actually holds together really well. All right, I'm gonna, I haven't had a bite of the tuna one yet. <laughs> yeah. Guys, it's on me. Ah! Oh god. Wait, right, that's reason number like 117 that you shouldn't bring a tuna bunzo on a plane. <laughs> or on public transportation of any kind. We do not endorse that. Could you imagine if you juice someone with your bunzo on a bus? <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, tell us what you're making. I am making, honestly I call it like a trash can chili because there's no wrong way you can do this. Like basically any ingredients you have in your house that you're like, oh, they're going kind of bad or I don't know what to do with them, just chuck them in this chili. So right now I got green pepper and orange pepper. Um, I got myself a yellow onion, just a pile of sweet potatoes. We're a household that eats sweet potatoes daily. So we always have a huge amount of these in there. And then cans of stuff, I got cans of tomatoes cans of corn, cans of kidney beans, and cans of green beans. Um, all sounds good, I have some beef. Let's dump it together in a pot and see what happens. But I'm one of those people who really struggles with meal prepping, especially lunch. A lot of times, especially during the week, I don't have a lot of time or a lot of energy to wanna to cook a meal if I'm working from home or be prepared enough to bring one into the office. And so this is a really great recipe that's pretty nutritionally dense and reheats really well and you can make it in large portions. So I always try to make this on like a Sunday night or a Monday night when I can just have some time to let a pot simmer for a while. So I'm gonna start by peeling up all my sweet potatoes and then we'll get them diced up. To get everything cooking, I'm gonna put a burner on pretty high heat actually, uh, just to make sure you can start getting some of these vegetables browned. I do like using vegetable oil for this recipe for the simple fact that it does have a high smoke point and uh, you know, those healthier oils like avocado oil or olive oil, they do have a pretty low smoke point and I'm pretty bad at watching my stuff. And so for a really simple recipe like this, I wanna use just a no effort oil so I can make sure everything can get. How much you put in there? Um, you know, probably about four tablespoons, which keep in mind, this is a really big pot and we are gonna fill this pot up all the way. And for reference, this will get you between six and eight servings. Oh, totally. So four tablespoons for six to eight servings, you're rock solid. So we're gonna take all these sweet potatoes that we diced up and just chuck them in here and get them browning. The reason I put the sweet potatoes in first is because they're kind of the densest, longest to cook vegetable out of the pile, even the meat. Um, so I do wanna get these a little brown in here and get them started. So by the time we do stew, we don't have a really squishy green pepper and a hard sweet potato. So sweet potatoes in first. Let's let those babies roll. All right, veggies are all diced up. Next, we're doing about, I'm doing about a pound and a quarter of beef. Like I said, this will get me between six and seven servings. So I just do like pretty much a pound of beef to get it in there. Literally dump it right on top of the vegetables. There's probably gonna be some sort of cooking guy out there that says it's not good to put raw meat on top of vegetables, but this thing is gonna be stewing for about 90 minutes and it'll get browned up before we put the rest of the sauces in. So I'm gonna keep doing it this way. Ground beef is all browned up and ground up looking super delicious. Now it is time to get all of our canned veggies in. Again, the hardest part of this, uh, which I've tasked Molly to do, is literally just open up the cans. Oh. Very, very hard work, my people. Beef is all ground up and browned. I have some corn that I'm dumping in. Boom, whole can of it. I have some light red kidney beans, classic for chili, dumping it in, super scientific. And cut green beans, dumping it in. Obviously there's a lot more vegetables in this chili than any other type of chili, but super great way to get all your nutrition in. And honestly too, I have fed this to people who don't love vegetables, aren't a huge fan of vegetables, and they will eat this like crazy. So if you do have picky kids, this might be an awesome alternative for you guys to get a little bit more vegetables in their diet too. Diced tomatoes going in. I like that because there's some like extra sauce to it instead of just dicing up like fresh tomatoes. If you do have fresh tomatoes though, it'd be totally fine. And then for this recipe, since it is kind of big, I have a big can of tomato sauce and a small can of tomato sauce. I put those both in and then I will actually take, and this is very scientific, I take the big can 
and I rinse it out with some water, but I mostly just put a little bit of water in here. Um, I fill it up about halfway to add it to the chili just to get a little bit more liquid in there and loosen it up because with the tomato sauce alone, it's really, really thick. So if you like a super thick chili, don't add water, but I do like adding water just to get a little bit more liquid in there. And then the final step, I do have two chili packs. Um, I do these because they're just super simple, but if you do want to make your own homemade uh, chili seasoning, you know, get your cumin, garlic, um, chili powder, I like some cayenne pepper in there, um, you know, to kind of reduce salt, but I like these ones because I don't have to think about my own spice mix. Um, these ones don't have a huge amount of salt in them anyway, and they taste really good. So I just take two of these because there is so much here, dump it in, and we're going to give it a really nice stir and let this baby simmer for, like I said, about 90 minutes to two hours. Stirring this pot is a bit of an extreme sport because it's like pretty close up to the brim. Um, that's why I try to use this absolute cauldron of a pot, but I'm literally just giving this some stirs to get the chili seasoning incorporated throughout the whole dish. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm literally going to drop my heat. So like I said, I had it on pretty high heat. I am going to drop it to a really, really low simmer, pop this lid on and going to go ride my bike later guys. That's a wrap on cooking, guys. Easy. I mean, I learned two new recipes from you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm hoping I can actually add that to my breakfast and up my protein numbers a little bit. Um, and I'm stoked to get more. Like, I tend to make dinner and then eat the leftovers for lunch, and I'm excited to make more of like a week long meal. Yes. So to save myself some time during the week. Dude, heck yeah. yeah. Guys, I really hope that these recipes can help you out as well. And honestly, make your training a little bit simpler, right? We can't be all be professional chefs, professional bikers, mm -hmm. professional wives and girlfriends and all this stuff. So I hope you guys can take this. Um, let me know how the recipes go. If you guys have some ways to make these better, please let us know. We can't wait to hear how it is. Please feel free to comment what you guys think about this. Like the video, subscribe to our channel so you can see what we got going on next. But we will catch you guys later. Ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> God!